Right off the bat, let's clear up a few things. I like Ludwig. I don't watch too many streamers regularly now, but Ludwig is in that mix for sure. And I really like Ludwig's stream setup. If more streamers moved away from RGB and towards Comfy, I think streaming would be better overall. But I think there is one issue in Ludwig's setup now that trickles down to both stream and his YouTube videos. I'm sure a lot of people don't notice or don't care. I'm one of the ones who does and do. This is a clip from a recent Ludwig video and this is generally what we're working with. So obviously during the daytime you have a lot of outside ambient light bouncing around the room and that is coming in with this almost like neon teal blue. He obviously has some sort of light shining more on this side of his face um, that looks a little more natural. And you can see if you compare this to a scene after the sun has gone down, you have this main source of light as well. And then that fades off on this side of the face. And behind him, both on the tree and this lamp back here, you have this like really nice, cozy, comfortable, warm light. But generally across this image, you have this really cool, almost harshly cool light um, that really influences the, the color on its face as well. This should be fixed. And obviously this is best addressed at the source. If the color temperature of that main key light on him was matched to the outdoor color temperature, then the camera he is using could be set to that appropriate white balance. And I do think the entire scene would feel better. But what I wanna do in this video is go through the process of what I would do if I was handed this footage for an edit. And that brings us to the second big thing to know. I am not a colorist. Of course, there would be a highly professional way to go all about this and focus on color in the scene. But again, I'm doing what I would do off the bat. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be pretty loose. While this was the raw clip I brought in, we are gonna end up with something closer to this. You can see the color is evened out across the screen more. We've gotten rid of that uh, harsher blue color and even along the face as well. And there are some other secrets I sprinkled in here. I do think it is quite a bit of an improvement, but that's subjective. But I'm gonna get started by selecting our raw clip, dragging it over here just so we have a preserved copy. And then with that clip and the playhead over that, I'm gonna click this button down here to open the color page. The color page can be very intimidating. I'm used to working in the fusion page, which is its own mess and pretty complicated, but the color page I've still barely dabbled in. So I'm not gonna give you a thorough tour here. I'm just gonna cover the tools that I would use to work on this clip. The only small thing you do need to know is that uh, the color page works on nodes and the way I'm going to work is I'm just going to select uh, this only node we have over here on a clip. I'm gonna click Alt S and we're gonna do all our work on these two individual nodes. I'll select this first clip and then I'm coming down here to this little icon here, and that will open up this panel for power windows. I'm gonna select this ellipse mask here, and I'm gonna stretch this just, just around Ludwig's face, bring it, I'm gonna narrow it quite a bit because what we're going to do next is click this next button to invert that. We haven't changed anything, but if, but if you look at this color node here, you'll see that that center is now grayed out. And if we come to something like this first color icon here and start making drastic changes, you'll see that those changes are only affecting the area outside of the mask and the specific confines of this mask are, are fully controlled by uh, these guides here. I'm gonna click this undo button to undo everything we just did. And the first thing we're gonna try to rein in is this blue tint here. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, I don't wanna come right to where it's overexposed and blown out here. So I'm gonna come down either to this uh, chair or maybe this piece of some fabric up here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna come down and click this eyedropper button here. And this is the white balance control. If we click this, move it over to an area that in the scene should be white. This looks like some piece of white fabric or something. If I just click in the middle of that, you'll see instantly it shifts all of the colors in that scene. And that is already a very dramatic change. Now you still have some of that blue coming onto his face, but you see if I didn't have this mask there at all, then it would push um, his face where we have what used to be more accurate color way too far. So we're gonna retain this a little bit for that fine control. Now I didn't do too much else to the background, uh, but one thing I did do was come down here and pull the saturation control here down just a hair. Now if we toggle this node, it will toggle on and off that color change and that saturation because all of those are done on the same node you can see already what this one node is doing. And pulling down that saturation just a little bit, um, I think does help draw attention to Ludwig here in the center. I like that a lot. That is more of a personal and artistic preference. And now the only the real tweak I'm going to do is coming to this second node here. 
Uh, I'm gonna create another ellipse mask. And this we're gonna keep just for control on his face and really just his person in the center of this frame. This will be a balancing act. We have this blue color here and I think I'm going to try to manage sort of balancing these two nodes together so that this first node sort of uh, handles that subtle color curve across, but then the second node uh, can sort of treat his face as a whole. I'll come back to this first circle here that really has all of your general color controls. I'm gonna give it just a hair of contrast, just for fun, especially in conjunction with that desaturated background. Uh, just give it a little bit more punch. And then on this gamma, I'm gonna pull that just a hair warmer. These controls are super fine. So you barely need to touch this at all to have some pretty extreme effects. You'll see if I pull it strong, it looks, it looks bad, <laughs> but I'm just gonna warm that up a little bit. Maybe this gain as well, which will be the brighter parts of that image. Maybe pull that gamma back a little bit. And if you wanna look at the whole image, you have this little power window control here that you can just toggle off. And you can toggle on those nodes to see what happens. Again, that's warmed up the face a little bit and then that entire background as well. And if you ever want to preview the entire look, this icon up here uh, will toggle all of the effects and color grades on your scenes. So if I toggle that, this is what the raw scene was, and now this is what our graded scene is. I do think overall this might be a hair purple, so I could come back to these wheels on this offset if I just pull this a little bit towards green, balance it out. But again, this is the kind of stuff that real colorists spend lots of lots of time on and we are just whipping this together real quick. But if I was tossing this up somewhere, I would be fairly happy with that, addressing the most egregious issues and getting us to a point where we can really move forward. After we've done some of those adjustments, I'm gonna see how this works. We have this small spot of white right on the sticker with that main key light coming in. So after we've done some of those controls, I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, probably to about this brightest area of the sticker. I'm gonna try pulling the color temperature again, just for the second node inside that second mask. I'll select that. You see that instantly pushed it a bit more green, but that might've helped his skin tone a bit. Definitely better than that blue. I don't know, what do you think? That's what it was before, so the one too. I was about to say this wasn't a science, but I'm pretty sure for professionals, this is a science and an art. They're very good at what they do. I dabble. But I would love to know what you thought of these subtle changes and whether just some of these core color tools will be useful to you. You can use power windows to select or exclude certain parts of the screen and just sort of using uh, this first page of options that are, again are here on this first circle. You can control a lot of the common effects like contrast and saturation and the brightness and color shift uh, for lift, gamma, and gain, which roughly correlates to the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. I gotta admit, I am a little nervous to touch color at all in a video. It's not my field. Generally on this channel, I talk a lot about the fusion page and effects and motion graphics and animation, all of that. I've given away a bunch of free effects. If you don't know, if you're working in Resolve, I have some cool stuff for you. But that's all, I hope this video was helpful. If you think my very rough color correction looks awful, uh, let me know in a comment. And that will be that. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.